People don't like it. And I get it. I don't like it either. But what happens when you do the shit that you don't want to do? You see lots and lots of growth. So never shy away from the things you don't want to do. Good deal. So what we're gonna do today is called our upper body split. It's something that I started playing around with a little while ago and I really loved it. And off first glance, you're gonna look at this workout and think, uh, this ain't gonna do much. It's not gonna be that bad. But um, I've really enjoyed it and I've definitely seen some gains off of it. A lot of uh, put on a little bit of size and uh, definitely some strength and um, some, you know, hypertrophy training, which is a, a lot of what we talk about in my LFG program, right? Operation LFG. Uh, we want to look good, feel good, and, and then still be really fit so that we can beat our kids in sports. Obviously, never let that goal go. So um, what this is, it's, uh, it's a kind of a play off of uh, Mike Mincer, the bodybuilder's uh, style of working out. He always said one set to failure. Um, max on each muscle group is really all you need. Uh, I, I, I did try that once or twice and I didn't really like it. I didn't like how I felt. So what I turned it into was this, and this is more of a, um, so you get one uh, movement per muscle group ish. And so we do the full upper body in one setting and we do each um, movement to failure for three sets. You can either do them with very short periods of rest, like 20 seconds max between each set, and, and then you go to failure in the next one, and you can drop weight if you need to. So definitely like a drop, like almost like a drop set style of working out. Uh, the fatigue, the muscle pump that you'll get from this is pretty astounding. You'll leave and you'll definitely be tired. I remember the, after the, and I'm you know still working out pretty hard and in shape. And so when I, I looked at this, I was like, oh, this is gonna be boring, slow, long. I'm not gonna like it, enjoy that much. But it, the fact that you're going to failure for every movement is huge and I really enjoyed it. So give it a shot, be a little open-minded here. Might not be something you're normally used to, but I guarantee you'll see some results from it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do bench. We're gonna work up really quick, uh, find a good working weight and then hit a set to failure. Now when I hit failure, because I work out alone a lot, it's got to be right to failure without technically failing. So I know that my next rep most likely is not going to go. And so that's what I call failure. So for bench, and you want that rep scheme to be around, you want those reps to be around 10 to 12 on that first set, about six to eight reps on the second set to failure. And then on the last set, depending on how much you drop on the weight, Again, roughly five to eight reps on that last set to failure. So we're gonna start with bench. Uh, I'm gonna do barbell today. Sometimes I'll switch it up and do dumbbell. Dumbbell is obviously easier. You can go to failure if you need to on a dumbbell um, and just drop the weights. On a barbell, unless you have safety arms, you know you have to kind of do the more so, I'm going to fail the next rep, so I have to put it down. Um, so we're gonna do three sets of bench. Then we're gonna go into our barbell row. Today I'm gonna have palms facing down, right? And I'm gonna stand on plates so that I can really allow my arms and back to extend. I'll talk about this more later. Anyways, uh, so again, three sets to failure on barbell row for the back. Uh, we're gonna hit dumbbell strict press, same thing. Great, I can go to failure because it's dumbbells, so if I need to drop, I can drop, it's not a big deal. We're gonna do chin-ups chin ups for our uh, biceps. I don't love curls, I know they're, curls are great, people love doing bicep curls, I don't. I'd rather do something a little more functional. And so that's why I choose chin-ups. I still get a great bicep pump from it. Um, obviously for our triceps, my favorite movement is the upper body squat, which is dips. I'll never go away from those. Plus, I think they're more functional. Um, getting up over a wall, right? How do you do that, right? So if I'm jumping over a wall in my military days, climbing over walls, things like that, right? You have to be able to press yourself up. Uh, and then for our abs, we're gonna do L sits to failure, three sets to failure and L sits. So this is a really good, it's really taxing. You will actually, uh, your body will be taxed when you're done with this, without a doubt. I remember I left and I was like, shit, I am roasted. Like I felt like I did a pretty hard uh, Metcon from a CrossFit style. So hope you guys enjoy this. Another 
day of almost LFG programming right now. Um, really fun. It's actually a lot more fun than it sounds, at least in my mind. Uh, I hate slow lifting. So this for this, this is, this is more my style. So I'll, like I said, rest, rest no more than 20 to 30 seconds between sets. And then between exercises, no more than like 90 seconds to two minutes. And that's my rest between. So again, my set range is for my first, th for my um, three sets. My first set, I wanna go around to 10 to 12 is where I want that. So that's gonna define what weight I'm using. My second set, again, maybe pull a little weight off, get uh, around six to eight reps um, to failure. And then my last set, about five to eight reps. Again, if you want to strip weight, do a drop set, that, that works too. Or you can try to stay at the same weight, all depends on how you feel. But again, no, resting no more than 20 to 30 seconds between those sets. And then when you're moving to the next exercise, two minutes. Boom, I repeated it twice, now you can't forget it. How often do you work out with music? Um, I would say more so than not anymore. Um, you know, I know I post a lot of videos where I'm not, but basically what I have to do for those videos is, to, you know, use my phone. And so I'm, normally I am using music on my phone. I'm not going to lie and say I, I do it all the time, but there's definitely times where I like to shut it off and let my brain and let my mind think and uh, hear my thoughts. Um, I'd say probably once or twice a week, I'll probably go without music. But for the most part, I have music on. I just don't even hear it, to be honest. I don't hear the music that often. It doesn't take music to pump me up. And so I put that out because it is, I think a lot of people are like, you know, oh, I couldn't run without my music or I couldn't do this without my music. And I'm like, I like not to be distracted sometimes. Um, I like to hear where my mind goes when, it gets, when shit gets hard and shit gets tough and see if I can, <clears throat> you know, push those weak thoughts away and continue to do what I, what I know I should be doing. So it's, um, it's a good, and, and also like, I feel like we're always constantly stimulated, right? With social media, with um, TV, with, with po podcasts, with everything, our, our mind's always, you know, being stimulated by something. Um, that's why I, I don't mind not having music on at all. I like to, I like to hear my thoughts. I, when I drive, I rarely turn music on. Uh, and I really like that time. It's, my favorite time to think about things that I want to do with my business, how I want to train, stuff for my boys, um, you know, stuff with my wife, right? Like I, I get my best thinking in when I'm driving and so I don't like to have the radio on. And you know, <laughs> my wife calls me the psycho sitting there driving in silence, but I, it doesn't bother me at all, even a little bit. I actually really like it. It's my favorite time to think. What about when you were training for the games? Was that part of your training? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, you, you had to think about weird little things sometimes, like when things go wrong and you had to train that stuff, right? Like your machine might turn off on you. You know, have someone throw a towel over your monitor on your rower or your bike, and then you couldn't see where it was at and you had to keep, just keep going and keep pedaling um, or keep, or, or throw something on the true form, the screen so you couldn't see it. And that's a, you know, that's a mind uh, play right there because a lot of times people need to see that. They need to see their pace. They need to see how far they've gone, how much, how much they have left. And not knowing is a good way to, to really push yourself when you don't really know. And it's like, no, I just gotta go as hard as I can right now. And that's all I have to do because there's times that shit's gonna happen and you wanna be ready for it and you wanna be trained for it and not have to hope that you can handle it if it happens to you. You don't know, you know, as a competitor, how that shit's all gonna play out. I mean, CrossFit is constantly changing, constantly growing, and it's not CrossFit, all sports, right? I mean, Michael Phelps, his, his, uh, his coach used to turn the lights out on him in the pool when he was swimming to see if he could handle it, or he'd put water in his goggles and make him swim with water in his goggles in case that happened in a, in a, in a, uh, you know, in a competition. Like that kind of shit is you know, what defines the best because everything's not gonna be perfect. But like we always said in the SEAL teams, you know, plan your dive, dive your plan. When everything goes to shit, you just get the job done. And that was a, a, one of my favorite sayings because that was what we were really good at doing. Whenever we needed to get the job done, we did it. No matter the circumstances, no matter if shit was going right or wrong, like you just got it done. And, um, you know, it's a great way to really realize that life is not always going to be perfect 
and in this precious order and sometimes shit's going to go weird and wrong and things are going to happen and you have to be able to adapt and overcome in those situations because if you're not you're not going to make it very fucking far <laughs> all right here we go first set So I was 220, I'm going to go to 205. <laughs> 30 seconds, just hit. <sighs> so now I'll go to 195. And hopefully I can get the reps. Chest is getting a good pump. Whew. All right. All right, 25 seconds. That was good. Ah, Wendy didn't have to pull it off my chest. I'm happy. And, uh, if you don't have a spotter, do not use clips on bench. Um, and if you do hit failure where you don't get the rep, you don't wear, wear clips so that you can tip the weights off. Um, Drop it onto your chest nice and slow. Uh, and then literally just tip and tip the weights off. So that's better than really hurting yourself. So don't be afraid to look stupid. I try to know, I've been doing this long enough to where I know I'm not gonna get the next rep. All right, into barbell row. Again, not resting more than really 90 seconds to two minutes. Um, on this one, I, I like to give myself a little bit of room so that I can actually get some extra depth on that row and really get that, those back muscles stretch. I stack a couple plates um, and it really helps. This one, this one I typically don't have to do drop set. I can typically hang on to those reps at the same weight. I'm gonna go like 175 today. So I'll just do one quick, one quick warm up set to feel it a little lower and then I'll throw 20 more pounds on. So get that grip, palms down. I still find the knurling on the bar. And uh, like I said, I try to pull right to my belly button. Let me get that full stretch. Feel the movement and throw your tens on. You want to use straps on this, you can. Um, because this is, we're trying to isolate the back. You're not really focusing on your grip here. So when I wear straps, I can definitely feel my back more than when I have to over grip. All right, 20 seconds. This will get your breathing up. So a little bit of conditioning. Eight reps there. When you really start to, when you're not using a chest supported uh, row, you know, you have to really see when you're not using your momentum as much. You're gonna use it a little bit, which is fine. Just Try to keep it to a minimum. And, uh, and when you start to really feel it, that's basically failure on this. <sighs> ah. Woo. Yeah. I like those more though, more than like a, a shrug. I definitely start to feel my upper back more, my lower traps. 90 seconds and then we're into our dumbbell strict press. This will get, this is the one that gets really sticky. Um, shoulders or you can hit failure out of nowhere. So really knowing where, what kind of dumbbell, what dumbbells to use to hit the right numbers. So um, again, hit a, hit a warm up set, get the muscles firing. You know, if you miss and say you go to 14 or 15, it's not a big deal, right? You're, you're still getting work in and you're still doing the job of taxing the muscle to failure and you will see some gains out of it. So play with the dumbbells on these. You'll find the right ones. It might just take a little bit of time, but uh, yeah, for the, this is definitely one you have to do drop sets on. 
um, shoulders go quick. And when you hit failure, you hit failure. I'm gonna warm up, probably hit 45s for a couple of reps. And I think my first set will be at 60 pound dumbbells. That should be about right. And then, uh, then I'll go to 50s or 55s. And then my last set will probably be 45s. Yeah, I think 50s. Gonna have to be the play. Really try to keep nice and controlled form. You know, you'll feel the muscles burn. Ah, uh, at nine there. So I probably could have went. 55, a little more, but still got the job done. I'm gonna stay at 50s for this last set. It keeps you engaged. The short rest periods really help. All right, seven there, so yeah, that's good. Halfway done. On the chin ups, which we'll do weighted. I'd love to have to do drop sets on this as well. Um, kind of know my numbers. So, um, yeah, I should go 40, 45, uh, 35, 25 is probably where I'll be. We'll see. But, um, you know, if, if, if weighted's not in the, in the cards, right, do negatives on the on the chin up, right? So either use a bench, you could get up into the chin up motion and then do the slow descent as much as slow as possible. And that, you know, until basically you can't hold it until you're just collapsing. And that's a, a great way to do these without having to use weight. You should be able to do more chin ups than regular pull ups. Um, you can just engage your, your biceps and lats a little more. So, uh, but I love the chin up for the bicep um, portion of this because I don't know, I just feel like it's more functional than, than doing bicep curls. I, I, you know, I wanna be able to pull my own body weight up, not curl 25 pound dumbbells. I don't really care about that. So, but I also do wanna have big biceps. Who does it, you know? All right, we're at the two minute mark here. Moving into our chin ups, let's go. Wow, there's failure. Oh, fuck. All right. Into dips before we do everyone's favorite else sits. That's a fucking heavy ass dip bar. <laughs> I'll probably go 55 on this. And now uh, I won't have to drop nearly as much on dips. If you're really watching the clock and only taking that 20 to 30 seconds rest and two minutes rest, this is a fucking workout. short. Well, I got the four there. If you want, for some reason, if you hit failure really hard there, maybe take a second, do a four set, do a little drop, see if I can get the rest of those sets 
Best of reps. It's always fun to play with it. I feel like pressing as opposed to that pulling. Sometimes you can use an extra set. All right, into our L sets, everyone's favorite. Again, just three sets with some very short rest. The L sets will get tough. Get a little shaky out of it, you know, but I love the L set for. Uh, core strength, so it's, uh, it's it is a underutilized movement because it hurts so bad, and it is uh, people don't like it, and I get it. I don't like it either. But what happens when you do the shit that you don't want to do? You see lots and lots of growth. So never shy away from the things you don't want to do, and then time these ones so you know you know how long you're getting, so that you can try to up that stuff right every time like get a little bit longer get a little bit stronger um you can throw ankle weights on when you get really good at it i i haven't gotten there but you can i'll get your quads too Remember, 20, 30 seconds max. And I don't care if you bend your knees, as long as you feel like you're squeezing your abdomen, you're getting work done, you don't have to, you don't have, to have your legs straight. Fuck. It hurts, it hurts good. It hurts so good. 20 seconds. Here we go. Last one. Oh, fuck. Okay. Right now, if you're gonna do my L sit. My quads definitely get a little crampy. So doing a couch stretch will really help stretch that quad out. Oh yeah. Right quad was cramping hard. So yeah, that's something you gotta work up to. Um, you know, L sits are good. It might not be long, but you're gonna get something out of it, right? That static contraction is a great way to obviously really fatigue the muscle. Um, and you see growth. So I know no one likes L sits. Again, you don't have to have your legs straight. Just get those knees up, have them bent a little bit. As long as you're feeling that abdomen contract, you're good and it hurts. Um, and then as you progress, right? Like you said, you'll get your legs straighter. You keep them up straighter longer, keep the feet up higher, um, but it's all a progression. So everyone's got to start somewhere. So don't get upset with the weights or the reps. Um, you know, try to hit the right rep scheme. If it's off a little bit, just play with it, adjust it in the moment. So um, it's all great. It's a great tool for hypertrophy training, right? Trying to put on some size. Uh, you know, it's going to failure is an underutilized tool. A lot of people don't like to do it because it hurts really bad. And so I get it. But um, you can see a lot of great gains from it. And I started playing with this a while ago and I have definitely really enjoyed it. It's a, actually a great workout. It took me a total of 30 minutes. You know, that was literally, I started the clock from the first set of bench. So very little warm up into that workout. This can be done quick. I put this in my LFG program, um, started playing with it. You're not gonna see it every week, but you are definitely gonna see, uh, see it here and there in a couple week progression or a couple week lengths, right? So we do that twice a week and you get a really great upper body pump from it and we can do it with legs too. So hope you guys enjoyed that. That was really fun to share that. Uh, you know, it's, it's a uh, 
it's not quite like a traditional conditioning workout, but it's it's a it's you get if you're staying on your rest rest and really focusing on it, one to two, one uh, 90 seconds to two minutes in between exercises and 20 to 30 seconds between sets between exercises, you definitely get your heart rate up and you'll see some breathing. So hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked it, come check out check out Operation LFG. We'd love to have you on the squad. We're uh, we're seeing great results from so many different people out there, from NFL vets to everyday dads just out there trying to kick their kids' asses at sports. So hope you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, and do the thing. And as always, don't forget to pay the man.